How many layers of fiberglass do you need to lay down to get a specific hull thickness? We all can calculate how thick our hull needs to be, measure how thick our hull is, but how many layers of glass did it take to get that thickness? In today's episode, I'm going to be testing that to find out just exactly how many layers of glass do you actually need to lay down to get a specific thickness. So I came up with a way to test this that seems pretty simple. So I'm going to make test pieces that are 12 inch by 6 inch. So each piece covers half a square foot. And then we're going to laminate up one that is one layer thick. Then another that is two layers thick. Then three layers thick. And then five. And then ten. My goal is that from this we can then figure out not only what is the thickness of one, two, three, five, or ten layers, which gives us enough points that we can then plot and fill in the rest of the holes, as well as figuring out the weight of each thickness. So each piece that I'm making is half a square foot, which means that from this you can calculate the square footage of your project and then its thickness and then figure out what the weight is. Now from a Google search, one cubic foot of fiberglass weighs approximately 96 pounds. So that means that every inch of fiberglass should weigh about eight pounds. Now by doing this test, we can then compare ourselves to the Googled answer of 96 pounds per cubic foot because we can extrapolate from this test what one cubic foot of fiberglass would weigh in our exact build. But more importantly, how many layers of glass does it take to get to any thickness that you need? The reason I'm doing this test is because I'm building this bumpkin, which is going to go onto our auburg. It's going to make the whole boat longer, and I need it to be a specific thickness. I don't know how many layers of fiberglass I need to lay up to get that thickness. I've done a quick Google search and found that one cubic foot of fiberglass weighs 96 pounds and is roughly about 0.04 inches thick, roughly sort of. So from that, I've then run some basic math, and I think I need to do about nine layers of cloth to get the thickness that I want on this. But I don't know. And I want to make sure that I'm building this to the actual specifications it needs to be and not just what Google told me. So that's where we're going to be doing this test. And from this test, we can then extrapolate any value we need using these numbers. Now, if you're doing a project, all of these materials are from Total Boat. The bioxial cloth that I'm using, that's from Total Boat. The resin, that's the polyester resin from Total Boat. So if you're going to be doing a project, these numbers will apply to you if you're using those exact products. And then you don't have to do this test because there's no guesswork. I already did it for you. Now, if you're using a different company's product, you want to do the test because even though 1708 is a standard cloth, 
over the years, I've used 1708 from a couple different companies, and every single one is very different. They go on thicker or thinner. They look thicker. They look thinner. Everything's been different. So if you're doing a project and you're using a different company's 1708, I would carry out this test as well. If you're using Total Boat, here's your answers. I did the math for you. All right, the results are in, and I must say they are rather interesting for a special, like a little personal reason. So I always like looking at why units exist the way they are. And the Imperial system is a, a conglomeration, is a nice way of putting it, of units that exist for uses, not so much for measurements in reality. So, uh, or for measurements on like a scientific state. So like every measurement has a structural, like, like a physical, tangible reason for its existence. Like, a big one is inches. You'll see down on tape measures, they'll go down to the 64th of an inch. They don't go less than a 64th. Now, who needs to measure 1 64th of an inch? Like, why? And a really useful reason for that is when you're doing woodworking and you're gluing up multiple boards, the glue line between the boards is 1 64th of an inch if you do it right. So that means that if you have 65 boards that you're gluing up together, you have 64 glue lines between them, it's now gonna be one inch bigger than you thought it would after you glue everything up. So just little things like that. It's like, oh, that's that's the use of this weird, obscure, random unit. So when I was going through all the math and uh, and like doing the calculations for these pieces of fiberglass, I found, I, I didn't see much of a pattern with the metric one because the metric one came out that each layer of fiberglass is about 1.1902 millimeters, something like that. It's like, eh, okay, cool. Writing it down, moving on. But each layer is 3 64ths of an inch. So this one that's one layer of fiberglass is 3 64ths of an inch. This one that's two layers of fiberglass is 3 30 seconds of an inch. Three layers is 9 64ths of an inch. Five layers is 7 30 seconds. And then 10 layers is 15 30 seconds. So this then made it really easy for you to calculate, hey, how many layers do I need for this thickness? Or how many, how thick will this many layers be? Because it's a simple ratio of 3 64ths. So if you want to know how thick something's going to be, but you know how many layers it is, you take 3 times the number of layers divided by 64 because there you're running the ratio of the 3 64ths. The opposite, if you know the thickness, but you want to know how many layers you need for that, you do the opposite. You just work the equation around. Instead of being 3 times the number of layers to get 64, you now do 64 times the thickness in, in inches and as decimal. That's You have to do it there. Uh, but you do 64 times the thickness divided by 3, and that gives you the number of layers. So for an example, if I'm trying to make this guy 3 eighths of an inch thick, here's the math. You take 3 divided by 8 times 64 divided by 3. 8. That is how many layers of fiberglass you would need to get 3 eighths of an inch. Now when I made these test pieces, I made them to be 6 inches across and 12 inches high. So they are literally half a square foot. And then I know its thickness, and then I can calculate its weight, and then I can figure out how many layers of cloth does it take to make a cubic foot. And then this is half of a cubic foot, so its weight is then doubled. So all that math comes out to mean that my actual work comes out to weigh 90.112 pounds per cubic foot. So it's actually a little lighter than the uh, Theoretical value for fiberglass, which I mean, we're off by six pounds on a cubic foot. Like that's that's a ton of fiberglass. So uh, that was really neat to see because from that we can then extrapolate for say you're doing a project like this one, figure out the area, how many how many square feet are you working with, what's the thickness, and then you can take that to figure out what is the volume of fiberglass that you're working with and then convert that into weight. So that's that's how it all kind of ties together there. So now for the last part, how strong is each one of these pieces? Okay, so looking at one layer of fiberglass, you can see 
This just bends really, really easily. So it's not very strong at all. Now when we double it and go to two layers of fiberglass, it's, it's much stronger. It's still, I mean, I'm bending this with my finger, so it's, it's not very strong, but it's a lot stronger by doubling the amount of fiberglass. Now we're going to triple. This is three layers of fiberglass. And now it's, now it's got some resistance to it. So three layers of fiberglass, we're looking at about 3.7 millimeters, roughly. Or 9 64ths of an inch. So really, really thin. I mean, you can see there's like nothing here. And it's got some strength to it. Alright, now we're at five layers of fiberglass, and this is 7 seconds of an inch thick, and about 5.7 millimeters. And I'm pushing a lot harder than I was on the one, two, or three layer, and it's not going. Let's push really hard here, and you can see it deflects, but it is a lot stronger. So that's, that's very good to know. Alright, lastly, this guy is 10 layers of fiberglass. And I, I'm just going to cut to the chase because I know the sucker's strong. Alright, so this is like if you're doing CPR. And you're pushing down and it just doesn't give. Oh, yeah. So this is like a rock. This is, uh, this is really strong. It's also just shy of 12 millimeters thick. So this is really, really thick stuff. And it's uh, 15, 30 seconds of an inch. In a previous video, we discussed the very, very basics of how thick your haul needs to be at an absolute minimum. And this is a very gross generalization for just the very beginnings of looking at haul design. Uh, so it's called your scantling number. And from that number, you can then figure out what is your basic haul thickness. Now, this is not your actual haul thickness because this is the number that then you apply into all sorts of other formulas that add or subtract or there's so many other variables that go into play. But you can generally say that your haul would be about roughly this thick, depending on what your scantling number was. Now that's great. That tells you a theoretical number for the thickness that your haul is. Now say you get a hole in your haul and you measure it and you're like, oh good, my haul was actually thicker than it needed to be. But now you need to do the repair. How many layers of fiberglass do you need to put in that hole to fill it back up? So that way it's the correct thickness. Because if you just put a layer on, the hole's closed. You might, well you shouldn't think that you're good, but you might. But how thick does it actually need to be? And that is where this math comes in. So you can then figure, hey, my hole was this thick. It'll take this many layers to get there because each layer is 3 64ths of an inch. Cool. You build your haul back up, you lay in the appropriate number of layers, and you're good to go again. Like, that's, that's the idea behind this test. It's the practical, real-world application to the theoretical number that we came up with in a previous video. With that, we can see how each layer of fiberglass adds both thickness and stiffness to anything that you're making because you could see as you know one layer it's waterproof that'll close a hole but it it doesn't really impart much strength it's it's very flexible as you go adding more and more layers it gets stiffer and stiffer now at some point it gets to the region where it's really stiff that's great but now it's too heavy or worse what if it's an area that actually needs to have a little flex so that way it doesn't crack so there's so many factors that come into play when determining how thick something needs to be that it's, it really is an art along with a science. So it, it's, it's very cool going through all these steps, learning and, and experimenting and seeing firsthand how these numbers come into play in the real world. So I'd love to hear from you guys. What is your starting point, like your, your minimum when you're building something out of fiberglass? Like you lay down this many layers of fiberglass and it gives you this much thickness. Like what, what number is that for you? I, I'd love to know. So let me know in the comments and we will see you on the next episode.